Hi again guys, uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Um, the, so after spending, I, I think I, I had three nights in um, in Medellin, um, I ended up spending an extra one night there uh, because of the, um, basically because of uh, the issues I had when I got my bike serviced in Cartagena. Uh, from a previous video, I spoke about how uh, once I got into Medellin um, and there was a huge amount of traffic, some pretty little, some pretty little towns here, nice riding through. Um, once I uh, got into Medellin and all the traffic, I um, uh, the, the bike was overheating and um, all my coolant was coming out of my coolant tank. And uh, the thing with the KTM is that um, you, you just can't like with the coolant tank. You've got to take the. I've got to take the crash bars off. I've got to take the panels off, um, and to access the coolant tank, which is one of the design flaws of the KTM. You just don't have any access to that uh, without you know 45 minutes of work just to get access to it. Not 45 minutes, maybe 15, 20 minutes of work to get access to it so I took it into uh, KTM Medellin which the guys there were fantastic and they they dropped everything to help me and and uh, did it for nothing as well um, and uh, yeah they, it was found that the the guys in Cartagena forgot to put the seal back on uh, under the cap um, for the coolant tank so yeah, that was pretty pretty annoying considering they had the bike for eight days and just really simple things that that service departments do, you know. Um, the, it becomes quite frustrating and it, it happens just all the time, you know. Uh, when you get your bike serviced, people say, oh, you should over, overlook, you can't, you know, you can't for days sit there and do that. Uh, if you're doing, like I like if, if I'm getting um, something done on my bike, um, that I'd like to learn, um, then, yeah, and this, and it's one thing that I couldn't, I, I couldn't possibly know about until something was wrong, you know. Um, so it's really annoying and frustrating that someone would do that, um, and it's just about processes, you know. Like, you know, they take a, they take the coolant tank off and they take the cap off and then they see the O-ring. Or the, the the sealant ring, and they um, the seal ring, and then they just put it to the side and just don't put it with the cap, you know, to, you know, in its little area, stuff like that. It just means that you're not an organised uh, um, uh, mechanic, um, and it's an individual thing. Um, the guys at Cartagena are really nice, but she's just that. I mean, depending on where I was, that could have just screwed me completely. And, and uh, yeah, I wasn't happy about that. But the guys at KTM Medium were really good. So today's ride was, um, you know, I still, I still, and, and the other thing about the KTM is with the new tyres, I still had a slight leak, but it was it was so minimal. Um, but from a previous experience, once you have a leak on a, of a tubeless tyre, uh, and especially from the rim, it just gets progressively worse. So even though it was like only a, a one psi, because I've do, done some consistent riding and I was losing, you know, one psi every three or four hours, um, probably three hours, uh, it became obvious. Now when I was in uh, Cartagena with that, you, you don't know because you're starting off the morning, uh, you're starting off your ride um, at a um, you're starting off your ride at a low, uh, a low psi level. So you're starting off your ride at a, at a low psi level, and um, and then you're stopping. You, you, so you're building up the psi, as you know, when you're riding a bike, your your psi will go up and down depending on the on the heat in the tyres and the part the air particles. Uh, you know, friction in between the air particles and the bike, the tyre will expand. And when it cools down, it will go down. So your PSI will go up and down, you know. 
So it was, I didn't know when I was just riding it around that I that I was actually losing, you know, a couple of psi, and it wasn't actually happening when the bike was sitting still. Um, so I didn't find out again. So then I had that issue that with the tire leaking again, and I thought, oh God, you know, just what I needed. Um, so anyway, um, I I was getting frustrated about that as well. Like I thought, oh, now I've got to deal with that again. So even though I've got fresh tires on, the high now uh, K60 Scouts, uh, uh, I still had that issue, uh, even though it wasn't a pressing issue at this stage. But anyway, today's ride was, uh, as you can see with the mountains, um, was the first time that I was getting really high up in in the in the mountain ranges, getting above uh, um, 10,000 feet uh, for the first time, which was pretty cool. Um, and um, I uh, and and this this trip was a lot of towns. So between Medellin and Cardi, you you uh, Cardi, sorry, you'll uh, there was just a lot of villages, which was really cool. I really loved it, but it just meant really slow going. A lot of villages, and I think I'll stop here. It takes a foot yeah. Um A lot of villages and a lot of trucks. Uh, and that's one thing you'll you'll see when you go through these countries um, that the countries without any rail networks or proper freight rail networks, you'll see all the trucks are on the road. Um, it's something that they're going to have to address in the future because it costs them a fortune in, in, in maintaining roads. If you've ever, a, a truck will damage, you know, trucks damage the road ten, 10 times the rate of what a car will and plus the roads have to be uh, reinforced so much more. There's got to be so much more um, uh, preparation done for when you're going to have trucks on a road than when you're going to have cars on a road because trucks are heavy uh, and you know trucks with a load would weigh 10 to 15 20 25 times the the car you know tire ratings and all that sort of stuff so um it's something that one day eventually they'll end up building a, a, a national rail network you know um which it, it probably an uh, international one you know um some of the countries have them uh, uh chile uh, sorry um yeah chile has a rail network. Um, usually, the countries that have got mineral resources, because the mining companies that make a lot of money, they want to have, they want to get their goods quicker and cheaper to the ports. So yeah, so I had, a, I mean, today, today's ride was just so much fun. It was a little over nine hours, about two hundred sixty miles, 500, 450 kilometers. Um, of going up into the mountains, following along, there's a little river here to my left that was just absolutely raging, uh, f following along rivers, uh, going, th going down into valleys and yeah, it was just a, a really, uh, I just had a, a lot of fun and, and you'll notice that when you buy it by the rivers here too, there's a lot of hoses that come out onto the road and they just let the water spill on the road and they're there for all these locals uh, washing trucks for like a dollar or five dollars or whatever they're washing the trucks for. And cars, I suppose, as well. But uh, they are—they are—they are everywhere, and they can cause some problems because when they leave the hoses on the side of the road, uh, sometimes a lot of the silt and dirt gets on the road, and you end up with—you um, end up with some slippery, pretty slippery little surfaces, you know, as you, as you're riding along. <coughs> you'll you'll see that. You, I haven't, I haven't, I'm talking about it now, and I, I thought I'd be seeing some. Um, but yeah, so I had uh, I had about nine hours. Now this this trip at four fifty k's, you know, you, four fifty kilometers, two sixty miles, two fifty miles, whatever it is. You'll notice that um, you'll think, oh well, I I'll probably be able to do four fifty, probably five six hours. You, you're not going to do it in that time, especially when you're stopping and and um, <coughs> it's a nice little uh, photo I'm crossing another one of the bridges. Um, so you can see that river is just full, you know. Um, but what you'll know, it, what you'll know, know is once you get riding, and especially through mountains when you're doing a lot of twisties, 
I was ended up taking about a five minute break every hour and another 15, 20 minutes every two hours, just because I, I just, um, you know, your arms get tired and, you know, even though it's lots of fun, it, is, it takes a fair bit out of you. Um, but def definitely, um, uh, definitely taking the brakes makes a lot of difference. The other reason is you can see lots of trucks. Um, the other reason you want to do this sort of thing is that um, you really have to concentrate because uh, your trucks and uh, uh, your, your trucks and buses, when, as you're crossing, as you're doing the twisties, you've got to sit sit on the right side and hug the hug the uh, the inside because sometimes trucks come around the corner and buses come around the corner a fair bit wide. Other times also, um, the you know they're overtaking and, and you know basically in, in in some cases it's up to you to get out of the way. Um, so you quickly learn that. Um, that sitting right where I am on the inside third uh, is is not the way to ride, you know. Um, you're just always moving over otherwise, so you're best off to, and it's a it's the slippery third, and that's the first third. Um, yeah, there's a fair bit of roadworks along this journey as well. And, you, and I got little bits of rain and stuff like that, but I, it wasn't too bad. Um, the, the rain, uh, I only had about two, it was just some showers and stuff like that. A lot of the water on the road is from those hoses. Uh, but it was a great fun, fun ride. Um, so my plan was to, to, uh, to spend only a couple of nights in Cali, because I'd been to Cali before a few times. Uh, really cool city pretty rough city but a uh, really cool city um, so the plan was just to spend a couple of nights there um, I, I, I wasn't going to get an opportunity to to look at the bike again um, I was going to do that I, I just decided that with the with the issue with the front tire I'll wait till uh, Quito in Ecuador to do something there um, but uh, so the plan was a couple of nights here. I wanted to be crossed in. Uh, I wanted to. I've got a. Uh, this is in early uh, mid December, so I wanted to basically get through Ecuador and get uh, Ecuador, get on the border of Ecuador, Peru, uh, by New Year's. Um, but I had a fair bit of writing to do, and there's some places I wanted to uh, to visit, some volcanoes and and stuff like that. So. Um, the, the plan was to, you know, to get through uh, Colombia and Ecuador uh, by New Year's, and um, I was I was going to be on track for that. Um, the other thing that uh, that that I've spoken about in the in the previous video was uh, all the stuff I was carrying with me as far as just being able to do regular maintenance on the bike, you know. Um, For more roadworks, um, and I, I found out that the, the toolkits that you get for with with your bikes are not sufficient. Um, you know, so you end up having all these little extra tools. And uh, there is a company I, I'll, I'll try and find the link for it and put it in there, but they make toolkits specifically for every single bike, so everything you do need. So I ended up having two base two toolkits. The one that comes with the bike. And that, that will do all the basic nuts and bolts on a bike and stuff like that, but it doesn't do everything. It doesn't cover all the things you, you may need. And because as you go further south, when you're doing a lot of off-roading, you'll find that you've got to go through the, your checks every, every day. Um, and especially when you're riding over rough roads, you, and I do it every day anyway, I check the tires, just checking all the walls of the tires, making sure there's nothing before I'm leaving a city in the morning. Um, uh, I make sure there's nothing that, you know, no no big chunks out of the tire or no uh, screws or nails or anything like that in the tire. I didn't have any of those issues the whole trip. Um, and not because I checked it, I just got lucky. Um, but checking those things before you're getting on a big, big, big ride is, is, is a must. Um, and just checking your oil levels, um, checking your chain tension, 
um, you know, giving giving it giving your, your chain a, a bit of a spray, especially if you're doing off-roading, um, uh, giving you a spray. And I did a little bit of an off-road today. Today I tried to do a cut through, and what they are. So on the maps you'll see that um, these are all old roads, so they follow a a specific route, um, and sometimes they they go around in a big U over you know, maybe 50 miles, they go around in a big U and then back again. And you'll see these little roads that go between them and you think, oh, well, I could cut through there and I could save, have a bit of fun off-roading and, and save some time. Yeah, um, today was the first day it didn't work out that well for me because I did the cut through and it was only about a 10, 15 mile cut through, but it, was gonna, it wasn't gonna save me a huge, well, there it is there. And I came to a gate and it was locked. And uh, <laughs> you, you sort of think, what the hell, you know? And uh, and I ended up spending waiting 20 minutes for a guy to come and unlock it. Now, I'm pretty sure it's illegal to do that um, in, in a country, but they do it because they've got livestock you know, around and they want to you know, fence it in, you know, they fence the thing. But you think they just have the gate shut, you can open it and then close it behind you. But uh, obviously they don't trust people to do that, so they lock it, and then that does two things. It stops people from going on that road, which is a public road, and then, and number two, it just it uh, it makes sure that you know that that the, the gate always gets opened and closed. You know, so I, I you can understand in a way they can do it, but I just don't know how they're allowed to do it. You know. So. Um, yeah, so I was going to be a couple of nights in Cali and, I, and um, look at those views. I mean, you can't really tell from there, but you're really high up, you know, and it's really cool views. And the only problem was, is a lot of these places it was really hard to find a spot to park. Because whilst you have all these spectacular views, they, they don't really think of the, the tourist. You'll see a lot of those too, especially around all the... I mean, the sugarcane farms and stuff like that, that was a sugarcane truck. Um, it's about four trailers. And uh, yeah, they're obviously transporting as many goods. The road trains, you see in Australia, you've, you've grown up with those. You've seen them when you've gone in the outback. They have them, you know, even bigger than that, you know, six, seven trailer long, you know. Um, <coughs> but, uh, yeah, so as we're driving through, we pasture land there. There's a guy scooting along. I caught up with that guy later, actually, because um, there was some more roadworks up ahead. Um, he's a local guy. Uh, he'd been riding around. Um, he'd just been riding around Colombia. I, I met. I met a lot of those. A lot of people. You know, f for the most part of my first part of my trip, I never hardly met any people from the U.S. or Europe or any riding. They were all from the same country, uh, the adventure riders I met. But getting down further south, getting to Panama, where a lot of the uh, adventure riders are going across, you know, uh, I met quite a few there. And then once you get down to Patagonia, you'll see more. And that's mainly people who have flown in and uh, renting bikes from, or have flown their bikes and are renting bikes from point A to uh, to point B, you know, uh, which is cool, you know, it's really cool. Um, I'm just trying to think of uh, where I am now. So uh, as you can see, the weather is starting to move in, move in a little bit. Uh, and uh, as I've said in other videos, is always make sure that, you're, uh, that you try to stick to the speed limits as much as possible through these towns. There's only two countries that I've visited that I, I believe have speed guns, and that and they were and there's possibly three, but uh, they were um, uh, Panama, and I got done for a ticket there, uh, doing a hundred, doing doing the speed limit, but there was road work, so they had the speed limit set at eighty, and I was overtaking like five trucks, which is just pathetic, but. Um, um, so that was one place I got done. I never had a chance to pay the fine anyway because you could only pay it in person and it was over a weekend that it happened. I was leaving on the Monday. But 
frustrating, you know. And yeah, you drop, you ride forty thousand kilometres, and uh, you get one ticket. And then you, if you ride forty thousand kilometres anywhere in the US or Australia, there's no way known you would only get one ticket. And in Australia, the fines are absolutely brutal. You could get three hundred dollar fines, you know. Um, so it's just not worth it. Plus, they've got all these automatic cameras, just and they're not in places that are dangerous. They're just in places they can make money, you know. Um, so yeah, country Australia is a country that you, you don't want to be breaking any of the road laws because uh, they're right on you. Um, yeah, they're just uh, you know like get going through a town and not completely stopping at a stop sign. You know all the ridiculous ones. You know that although you get there, there are rules in place for for reasons. You know police don't want it, don't show any discretion. It's all about money raising money. Um, the one thing you will notice in, in Central and South America is there's a lot of uh, police and a lot of military armed to the teeth. Um, and the, dif the difference is, and I don't know whether it, it is true or not, but it, it felt like the, the, there was more patrolling than, I mean, in the US there and, and in Australia, the police are just there to, to make arrests, to... Uh, get people to tickets and stuff like that rather than walking around the streets making sure everyone's safe it's not that's not entirely true but it, it is in Australia and the and the US it's worked the same way where the the governments cut the budgets so fine of all the police departments the the police departments um, are pretty much under pressure to, to raise money you know which which what over a long period of time what that means is people just don't like police because the only interaction they have with police are not positive ones i mean in miami i've been fined 150 dollars for riding a bicycle a new law was passed and that you weren't allowed to ride your bicycle through the mall between certain hours and i didn't know and i used to go to the gym and i'd ride my bike through the mall every single day that i went to the gym um, and uh, and then one day they changed, they changed, put some signs up, which I don't know how I'm supposed to read a, so, a new sign in a mall on a push bike. Um, and they find me $150, $150. Now you think about a person who earns minimum wage um, getting fined $150, a student for riding a bicycle. That's like two full days work. Everything's just completely out of whack. You know, the fines and the punishments for certain things are all weighted towards the people who who make the laws thinking, oh, well, I make 150, 200 grand a year. So I, 150 sounds reasonable. These are more of these uh, road trains. So you don't have that in South America and Central America. You don't have that bullshit. The, you will one day because the one day they'll be just like us and they'll do just like us and, you know, um, you know you'll see as they become more advanced, they find more ways to get money out of people. So Ecuador, um, certain countries just have tolls everywhere for roads. You know, they're just following the leader and the leader says, this is the way we do it. And they think, oh, well, that's why they're doing it. Um, whereas a smart country would just say, okay, well, the roads are all, we, we, we promise that we'll fund the roads through gas tax. And they don't. They just find new ways to, to tax you uh, because they don't want to spend your money correctly. It's a whole other story, but anyway, I thought I'd get into a bit of a rant there. Um, so as I approached, uh, got into a fair bit of flat territory as I was approaching Carly, um, come down from the mountains, and then the weather just started to move a little bit, and I ended up spending two, three days in Carly, two nights, and uh, I think that rained every day, um, which was not that big a deal for where I was. I had some work to do. And um, I'd been there a few times before, so there's only a few little areas I wanted to visit. Um, but uh, yeah, again, the process of when I finish a ride is, is the same every day. Finish the ride, unpack my bike, check in, get all my luggage upstairs. I then, um, I then uh, I've got this Anchor Powerhouse, which is a big brick uh, charger. And it, it means that when you go to, if you notice, when you go to a lot of hotels, hostels, you'll have one PowerPoint to plug things into that's convenient. 
with the Panker Powerhouse, I, I'd plug in the Anker Powerhouse and I'd get, that gave me something to charge my laptop. So an, a, a, an AC adapter and then also four, um, one, two, three, four, uh, four USB chargers. So basically I'd get all my devices off that I need, needed charging. My comm system, my camera, my camera, sorry. And, and you'll notice this too, like even the private companies have their own stock people to get their trucks on the road as quickly as possible because, well, well they don't want to be sitting on a, waiting for traffic, so they'll stop traffic, which is just unbelievable. Um, uh, yeah, so it, it would, it, it basically then I get everything charged up, have my shower. I have in my, I have my, one of my bags has my clothes in it and inside that bag I've got a thing called a seg sack, which is a really cool thing to have and it's really quite cheap. And what you can do is a seg sack is a little sack that's compressed, a compressible sack that you, um, that, that has three sections in it. So I can put all, just stuff all my socks in one side, my t-shirts in another, my shorts in another, and then I can just access what I need. And then I, the, the final thing, I'd have, as I was having a shower, I put my socks, and if I wanted to put my underwear, I put them in the basin, the sink, in the bathroom, uh, and put the plug in there. Put some uh, camp suds, which is highly high concentrate. Uh, you can use like palm olive dish soap, really high concentrate soap, and then you basically just soak them in there. Especially if you're staying a few nights, I'd wash my gear. If I was only staying one night, I wouldn't, because it wouldn't get dry. If I had to, and they really stunk, uh, well then I would. But um, and just use the other pair of socks. But um, so I'd have all of that ready to go. So basically, after about an hour or 45 minutes of arriving, everything's being charged. Then I can leave, go for a tour, walk walk around the city, relax a little bit, have some dinner, and then I would come back, do a little bit of my touring, and then come back to the apartment, do some work. Everything's already charged up. Um, maybe just change a couple of batteries over to charge them. So by the time morning comes, I'm, I'm ready to go again, plus all my gear is charged. And then when I get back to the hotel afterwards, I, you know, I pack a few things away, just get everything for, ready for the morning, and then I'll do some work, transfer all the videos. Normally, I, I would always, like I've got here, where I'm on ride day 39, I create a folder in Google Photos. I'm gonna talk about Google Photos in the next video. Um, Got a folder in, I upload all my images into into a gal, I create my own gallery album um, and I call it Ride Day 39 and upload all that. Most of the time I couldn't do the video so I create a folder on my desktop uh, or in, on my a computer uh, called Ride Days and I just put all the videos from that Ride Day in there. Um, <coughs> and if I had uploaded the videos for that Ride Day, I put Ride Day X. Uh, so it'll be Ride Day 39, Midi to Carly X if I've uploaded the videos I haven't. So this is in Carly now and it's raining. Um, and uh, yeah, so that, that's what I do. So I just make sure all the photos, and then Google will automatically create bunches of uh, photos out of the photos. And even if you put all the videos with it, it'll create a little mini video for that day as well. Um, so that that's how I, I, would, I would get organized for, for each night. And then in the morning, um, I'm making sure I'm trying to definitely get to sleep before uh, before midnight so that I'm getting like six hours sleep and then it's about a 30 minute process to leave uh, any hotel uh, that I found that it, it usually took me about 30 minutes um, by the time I wanted to check out some of them were painful like they wanted you to fill in forms and stuff like that really pissed me off when people people used to do that or they they would wait to, for somebody to check your room that didn't happen here, but they'd wait for someone to check your room before they'd let you go, and then they'd ask you, oh, did you take this? No, I didn't, you know. I never used the bar fridge stuff ever. Uh, but the rarest occasion where I would be able to get a drink or something, and then I'd even try to buy, locally I'd try to buy whatever I drank out of their fridge and put it back in there, because it's usually, so this is a hotel um, just up here, and I, I was able to park just outside, and then once I got my gear off, I was able to park uh, they had a little secure just on the right hand side there they had a little secure park underneath but it, was, it got pretty it rained pretty heavy for a while here I had a nice little balcony um, it was a, it was a nice it was a nice uh, hotel 
poor Wi-Fi. Um, but the guys were really nice and all that. So yeah, it was it was okay. It wasn't uh, amazing. So here's some of the final photos from that ride. Um, I had a good day. You know, it was nine hours, but you know, I was really enjoying it. So it di didn't really worry me that I got a bit of rain and it took took longer than normal. But that's you know that's getting there at three p.m. if it's taking nine hours from six a.m. 6.30 a.m., 3.30 p.m. It's a pretty time, good time to arrive. This is a little, a little art district in, in, in Cali that was obviously closed because it's a weekday. Um, and it's a big market sort of things on weekends. And at nights, on Friday nights. So it rains here, it rains here like anywhere in the tropics. Pretty heavy and then clears up a little bit. This is a hotel, a pretty poor photo. It was a, a, it was a loft hotel. It was pretty decent, sort of all that. You had a fridge, microwave, all that sort of stuff. Balcony. Um, it was pretty noisy out in the street. Um, but yeah. Anyway, guys, questions and comments below as usual. Talk to you soon.